Hey everybody, I'm TJ Majors. Welcome to the f***ing show. Way to start off strong. <laughs> I don't think you can say that. Ah, uh, you can't. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm TJ Majors, spotter of the six cup car. I did a truck this weekend. It was a 61 truck. Who drove that? Uh, Jake Drew. I've um, heard of him. Did a good job. He's got uh, two first names. I know. I, I, and I called him by both of them, too. Yeah. <laughs> Brett Griffin uh, just got back from Indianapolis Motor Speedway this morning. Freddie, how you feeling, buddy? Happy birthday. Hey, thanks. Uh, Freddie Kraft, spotter for Bubba Wallace. Chandler so was your Smith. birthday today? or Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was my birthday. We I celebrated can't. it Saturday night. And then, and then Sunday. And Sunday night. And and then then he celebrated it last night. And Freddie's going to sleep for like a day Tomorrow and a we're going to Atlanta <laughs> to the Braves game. Wow. And he better have a f- private jet because I'm more and more I think about that drive. And, and y'all are complaining and saying that I get a, a birthday week. What's this up, kid, Casey? Like two weeks long is hey. birthday. Casey had the nerve Nobody to say you. that she's not high maintenance. No, she said we are high well, maintenance. Yeah, you and complain- she's not. Okay, yeah. for the record, you started you are off high by complaining that the show <clears throat> sheet is not du- is No, I didn't say anything. That you don't want the show sheet double-sided. I complain because the show sheet is 47 pages. <laughs> All right, can we, uh, it's too heavy, it's si- too heavy to lift. I can't. Yeah, but we recycle, <laughs> so All right. it's fine. Well, right. anyways. It was embarrassing standing at <laughs> the right, how about today. This? Can we get a show of hands of Casey's high maintenance? Raise Brett your hands, hands everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Brett had all six of his hands up. He did not. He knows better. All right. Well, let's not forget this episode is presented by our new sponsor, Birch Gold Group. Get a free info kit on protecting your IRA and 401k with gold by texting DBC to 989898. Don't forget 989898. Can't miss it. Huge response last week for it. So please take... 10 seconds and text uh, 989898 uh, DBC. After only one caution and over two hours of green flag racing, mm. we finally have a winner, and it was Michael McDowell. What? Well, that race was fast yesterday. It was, I mean, yeah, it blew by. I'll tell you what, like, from the other road courses that we run, like, when you, like, Coda and Chicago, it seemed to take a little longer to get around the track at them places because. Normally you have, it, it just by the time your car left your view, you were down in, you were in road course, road one. course one. Yeah, by the time you, the, he went out of your sight, it wasn't much longer until he was back, you know, out of the big track. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's uh, a product of big runoff areas, um, no track limits, where the track limits get sketchy, they pave and make it really wide, and they just run all over it, and there's no, there's no penalty for, Making them especially, they're, you know, you know, if there there's, was, there's, there's some penalties. Some people might disagree well, that's, with that. Uh, no, that that's when you get run off there and you get knocked off the racetrack. That's a different story. The but, like Justin Haley. Yeah, I mean the lap, guy that got body checked into three, the grass, or whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, Logano <Well, laughs> sucks there. <laughs> Apparently, I mean the guy, the guy jumped over a curb and blew Justin Haley I mean, right off the racetrack. He raced like a complete douche last year, and then he comes back this year and. On lap two. Well, apparently pit out was the entrance to turn one on the big track last year. I mean, lap two, you just take out a guy that needs to needs to win a race. And he did it. He did it. In a place where he's good. He did it again on the restart deal. Like, in the turn one, oh, he, he was on the cranked. bottom of, like, four wide s- sideways. I can't. I don't think you can <laughs> He say nailed that Blaney square in the all. butt. So, I don't, all of those Blaney fans again, in the tub are still still there. Yeah. Again. Now they got Logano giving it to him in the butt. <laughs> I don't think that's I okay. Think the, I think the tub got bigger. <laughs> I gotta, we got to change topics. <laughs> um, so seven different countries were represented in yesterday's race, and I know uh, Ricky Stenhouse might have. He tried um, to start a world war. He wrecked every foreigner <laughs> known to man. Probably I mean, what the f- is this guy thinking? If you don't, if you aren't from America, Probably get the. F- I'm wrecking you. Um, but. <laughs> He did. I mean, there's a lot going on. I, <laughs> let me see his birth certificate. Oh, I'm wrecking him today. A world war, he said. <laughs> he tried to start a world war, Freddie, on your birthday. Um, but I will say it was really cool hearing some of the radio conversations. Um, I'm not going to make it to this I, show. I, I have no words Listen, at this I mean, it was exciting to see a bunch of them guys, and I think this was a much... What would they average better. about a 38th place finish? The rigors I mean, I, that were going to well, kick our asses? Well, SVG with the top 
top ten. Yeah. So. Yes, but he got this was the I want to hear the comments now saying okay, any of the top ten in supercars are going to come over here and win the race. I don't think that's happening. Hey, listen, one thing the the one guy that really impressed me this weekend was uh, Brody Kostecki. <laughs> he did good. The guy didn't get a lap of practice, right? He was out wow. there like he did not like he was. I for, something happened there. I don't know if he. I don't think he made like a timed lap in practice. Yeah, he did. And went out and qualified eleventh. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wrecked in practice. He got a yeah. he got a couple he laps. Yeah, like in. The, the, but the first it wouldn't run, and then they had guys in the cockpit trying to work on it. But he like, did he did a really good job of working his way up with wow. very many very and, little like his finish too. doesn't represent where because I think they played they did a deal like and you see this sometimes especially if you're trying to get a win or you don't have any points to race for if you're running in mid pack or towards the back you will pit with ten to go. Just hoping that a just, caution comes yeah. out and then you're going to stay out, you know. Yeah. And and they did that. So he was running probably around 15th and pit. I don't know where he finished. Probably mid 20s, back, you know. But you know their their finish doesn't represent where they ran. So him and him and like and we knew like SVG was going to be good. Like I talked about here last week. He's he, fast. He's going to run 10th to 15th, mm -hmm. and that's what he did all day. He ran 10th or 12th all day long. Finished 10th or 11th. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he finished. Brody day. finished 22nd. Yeah. So and that, but like I said, that was that was just by pitch track. What did your teammate? <clears throat> Tell me you saw that time in the one when he went to drive down the inside. And <laughs> break. Did you see how close he got? I didn't even tell Brad because I was like, it doesn't matter because whatever I tell him here is not going to matter. I was just sitting there watching it. It looked like slow motion that it was happening. Did, did you see that? Uh-oh. 67 goes, dive down the inside. And Ain't that that guy that eats all them hot dogs? No, different guy. <laughs> this guy goes to outbreak somebody and die, and it, he's not stopping. No. And he's, aimed right saw, for the, he's aimed right for the six, and I'm just like, <clears throat> nope. Don't do it. I, I don't. What do you say? I mean, you can't. If you tell him to but slow he, down, he, you're gonna he literally get hit. passed two cars when he was out. Oh yeah. Them. Like and he's like, I man, mean, you're not gonna make. The he corner. missed us by probably less than a foot, and I was just like, oh my god. Yeah, like, it was slow motion. Listen, was, they these guys. This just is a testament to our full time drivers that you know these guys are the the, the best at what they do. You know, SVG and and Kostecki win all the supercar races. Kobayashi dominates the damn sports car world. Rockefeller's a multi time Le Mans winner. And these guys just can't, can't compete with our guys. Like so, in this, like anywhere, like that's what I talked about last week about, you know, the perfect storm of Chicago was a place that our guys haven't been before, mm -hmm. and it's something that at SVG was used to. Here's a place where you know rain. We, we've only got yeah rain street course. Um, we've we've only even got two or three races here, and our guys are still that much better just because they've been there before. So I mean, it Wait was the Glen. The Glen will be yeah. just oh, as hard, yeah. man. It was it, are all those same guys running it? No, I don't think so. No. I don't think any of them are. I mean, I don't know somebody. I know Kobayashi's not. Yeah, I don't I think don't SVG think is. So um, most of these guys also have never used spotters before. As a spotter coming in and working with them. Like how does communication go? I think SVG made comments about not wanting to hear some information, especially when he was in traffic. I mean, what is that like, or how would you prepare? So, the, like, the, the best I can relate it to would be spotting a Rolex. And you just kind of get with the guy, like, these are people that, that usually don't have spotters. And, you like, some of them are like, don't talk to me. Like, there was one guy on our, we ran up the 911 Porsche one year, and, and the guy's like, just, I don't want a spotter, so just don't talk. And I was like, okay. And then he almost wrecked. And he's like, uh, nobody said anything. I'm like, no, <laughs> told me not to talk. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that, so these guys, it's the same as any other driver. It's just you got to cater to whatever they want. They always but start like I this every yeah, time. Yeah. I, I, I spotted for uh, Owen Kelly at, um, I think it was Road America when he was driving a KBA, 54. Yeah. And uh, he, he got Adam Stevens as the crew chief. And I said, well, you know, what do you need? He said, I don't need anything. I don't need you to clear me. I can clear myself. I'm good. I'm, uh, okay. I'm like, okay. So then <laughs> I forget. I think it was Kligerman was like outside of us off of whatever that last corner is. And, and Owen just ran him off in the grass. And Adam's like, how about you let Freddie spot before we get wrecked? <laughs> you know, like, because yeah. you can't. Yeah, I know you said you can clear yourself, but obviously you can. So Yeah, I mean, I understand if you're in the middle of a, you know, middle of a battle there. But at times you might not know that you're three wide. You might not know things, certain things. And. It's understandable that these guys come from a background with no spotters, but they just like the Rolex race. You get down there. I've been in meetings there, and the guy sits there and says, we don't want anything. By the time, you know, after practice, when you start spotting something, like, oh, yeah, info is good. Then in the race, they're like, I'm not even using my mirror. Just keep telling me things. Well, and a lot of that comes down to they've never had a guy that can give them information to help them, right? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, they don't think they need it. And when they get it, they do. I, I did hear of a little uh, uh, altercation on one of the spotter stands where apparently Chase Elliott uh, thought he was being held up by someone and he went down 
Uh, not not Chase's primary spotter, Eddie, but I guess his cousin or something spots Trey. One. I guess he he decided he wanted to go down there and confront another spotter, and guess which one he picked? Roman Pemberton. Really? How do you think that went? <laughs> <laughs> Roman texts me. Roman, I love Roman because he texts me. He goes, where are you standing this week? And I said, turn one road course. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's never heard from him again. <laughs> well, I don't think Trey will be going back down there to ask Roman anything anytime soon. How Why? did it go? You can imagine how it went. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Roman not to be messed with? Well, uh, some, some people up there don't have a fuse. Short a, fuse. A, yeah, yeah. It's a very short fuse on Roman. Yeah. I just uh, I saw yeah. Trey <clears throat> Saturday night. Trey's the one that filled in for me when well, I was good, good, uh, Probably good you didn't see him Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't swap Richmond head. It was my fill in. So how how do you think it went? I, I mean, thought I thought it was funny to listen to SVG on um, Friday night. Is that truck race Friday yes. night? Who spotted well, for him? Stevie, and uh, he like there's one time they're like, all right, man, yellow's out. You're the lucky dog, and he's like, that, is that good? <laughs> like, is that a good thing? Like it's just like a different. No, it means it. you were a lap yeah. down to start with, so it's probably not a good thing. But you uh, know, he had, I, I I saw some of his comments that he had a lot of fun at IRP, and it's a great race. Track that's too. one of the best. And, yeah, and he had a blast back right there. But like, it, it was fun because it was a one off, and you know, it didn't really. You were just there to finish. Half you were there to have fun. And, and I thought he did a good job. Like he, he did a great job. He didn't have like super fire off speed, but like yeah. he could run the same lap time for a while. And, yeah, he did. Fine. And I think he takes the right. He, he's having fun. He ha, right now anyway. He has mm-hmm. the right mindset of. I'm learning. I need to get better. Like, there's no like there. There's no timetable for this. Like, I you know they're gonna. Uh, we saw this week that they're gonna sign him. The track guy's gonna sign him to some kind of a multi-year deal or whatever um, to be full-time NASCAR, and that's gonna be I'm sure across all three series. Um, what do you think they should put him in? Like a truck? But you, you may think about this, man. Michael McDowell goes out yesterday, and wins the race. This guy shows up from Australia, and he's run two races in better equipment than Michael McDowell's ever sat in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's only runs two races. So, he has so, I mean, two top tens. Yeah, I mean, yeah, two top tens. But, I mean, like, you, you sit there and look at it, and you're like, man, that's crazy. I don't know. I mean, Freddie, if, if the path is to get him to cup, I don't know why you're having run a lot of Xfinity. I mean, he's already got cup experience, I mean, with the shifting and all that stuff. So I don't I think mean, you waste much time. I don't, I, I don't either. I mean, I don't it's know just, why I mean, would. it's just going to be a, a charter deal, you know, yeah. like where, where you're going to get a charter from. but. Or using alliances, I guess. Well, the only the only real race that's hard to make is the Daytona 500, and and without that charter there, you are in, in a mess. Yeah. I mean, they only let four that, open that cars would be, in. Um, that and, would be tough to make. That yeah, yeah. You, you got four open cars that get in, and everybody else is out. But everywhere else you go, you can get in. You know, it's not tough. I mean, it, it, Brett, you would know this. It can't be difficult to find a sponsor for him, right? I he don't is know. An I mean, international driver, all, first race wins. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the good spotlight news, is on him right now. I mean, this this opens the doors to international stuff for sure. Not yeah. just not just for driver wise. I mean, we got all these guys from other series. Look how many series they've come from. The race in our series, we've got all these people, and there is talk about eventually. I think we race international eventually, and that opens the doors even more. If he doesn't have a charter, Casey, he requires more money because you don't earn as much money when you go out and race, right? So he could finish say 10th and a guy who finishes 22nd with a charter get more money than he does so um that that part of it gets tricky but look track house has done a really good job of finding funding for for their cars i mean they're probably close to sold out for a couple years now that they got the bush deal with ross so track you can house put all is, your efforts into it truck track house is bringing that international feel to nascar which is what i feel like we've been talking about needing for years and they're doing it what within two races I mean, I can't wait to see what they do next year. I think it'll be interesting, especially with the these other, I guess, people coming coming from other countries wanting to race. I think I've heard a few other names that might. My my favorite part about Track House is everybody that I talk to at Track House loves working there, and it reminds me of the old MWR days. Everybody loved working at Michael Walsh Racing, so. It's, uh, it's cool to see them building that culture, and, and to your point, I mean, listen, they're, they're a different brand than everybody else in, in the garage is right now, so a like, nice little niche they're working on. You know, and seeing the – I think we got a stat here from Andrew about the – Andrew Andrew came in a little hot with that last stat. <laughs> like, like you, he's got, so he's got know, more top tens than, like, <laughs> than like Priest, but he's also ran – two tracks that he's really good at. If we ran, you know, ten short tracks, I'm pretty sure Priest would probably have – Fair. A, a lot of top tens, and, and SVG probably isn't going to have any. 
so y- the guy obviously is an amazing road course racer, but I don't think you're really comparing the same stuff right here. I got to jump ahead to one idiot because look at this picture of Tyler Courtney. Like, is that a mug shot? <laughs> I thought he got arrested. It's That's his what pa- I thought. It's his passport picture. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> he, I'm going to go and tell you, today's a good like day for Justin Haley to get a new passport picture. <laughs> <laughs> he said I look like a serial killer. Yeah, he does. He, he does. You see yeah. it? <clears throat> Casey, you see look. It? Seriously? Oh, anyway. When is he um, back, by the way? Uh, I don't know when he's coming back. Okay. I, I, would assume <clears throat> not, I would assume not this year. I hope not this year. But um, anyway, sorry, so, I got distracted. Side uh, track. One topic we talked about le- yeah, last week a ton was around crowds at Indy, how while they sell out the Indy 500, they sell out other races every year, this one always seems to struggle. I, With I, you guys being there. <clears throat> people say struggle. Them? People say struggle. Like, what did you say? 70,000? I was told by a good source that there were 70,000 tickets. That's, that's a that, good crowd. That's a lot of <laughs> that's people. That's a lot of people. <laughs> I was listening to checkered flag, black flag. Thanks, Andrew. What the hell is um, that? Uh, earlier on Sirius, and they were talking about how it looked like the the stands were empty. Well, be, they, but that track is huge. At, at, at the same time, for one, it seats, <laughs> what, like 300,000? Yeah, but people? was a hill in turn one empty? No, uh, where they had the tornado uh, last year with the tents, remember? No, yeah, there was, that was not empty. It no, was yeah. full. Oh, no, yeah, like the like the the problem was the f- like the front stretch grandstand was closed. I think because there was nobody sitting over there. Um, like I thought, somebody said it was really funny to watch Ty Gibbs get out of his car, start finish line, and like looked at a crowd, and there's nobody there. And he went, "What? Wait, what's going on here?" Uh, but like the there's there's a good crowd by us in turn one. I looked down in turn yeah. uh, 12, 13, whatever that is on the road I, course. I thought the action spots were there. That's where the people wanted yeah. to sit. There's I mean, people in the snake pit. Like I mean, who's gonna go sit at the big track turn three? <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to count that as an empty seat. Let me just go sit over there. Now, if like, it were to go back to the ro- to the oval. Oh, well, let me tell you something. I went to a driver's meeting yesterday. I haven't been. You in, did? I didn't. I haven't. When was the last time you went to a driver's they meeting? They let you. No, to, they kidding. let you into. I'm, talk, a driver's I'm meeting? talking years. I don't think I've ever been to a driver's. I mean, meeting. probably when Elliot Sadler was still racing Cup was the last time I went to a driver's meeting. Like long, long time ago. But anyway, I get in there. First of all, they revamped it to where it's way better than it used to be. Um, they've got a lovely lady doing the narratives and explaining all the rules. And by the way, yesterday was a lot of rules. Um, but one thing that the track president, who he did a phenomenal job speaking to the crowd, uh, one thing that he mentioned in the driver's meeting was, you know, Kevin Harvick is he, – he, you know, basically congratulated Kevin Harvick on having an amazing career, which he's had. And, and you know, this is looking like it's the last time you're going to race at Indy. You've been really tough on me the last few years wanting me to go back to the Oval. In the event I go back to the Oval next year – I want you to come be the pace car driver. And I was like, That's oh, cool. here, here's a little bit of foreshadow <laughs> yeah. going on. But I thought it was interesting during the race because I was watching from a different perspective from you guys. There were a few times I thought we could have had a caution. You know what I mean? And, and, and we didn't. And it was like, man, maybe NASCAR's doing this. I'm not saying on purpose, but, you know, if we don't throw cautions here and people complaining that it's boring. And, look, I think people like the race because McDowell right. won. Uh, the reality is it was a pretty boring race um, yeah. for, for the most part in terms of, you know, the on-track product. So I feel like if, if NASCAR and, and Indianapolis Motor Speedway are leaning back and going to the Oval, yesterday was the perfect race to announce that you're going back to the Oval. Yeah, well, so somebody looked at me, I think it was Brandon Lyons, looked at me and said, well, there's no way that the Oval could be worse than this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, and, but I, like I looked today and, and Gluck's poll was 75% or so. Uh, you know, good race. It's always weighted um, heavy on. Oh, yeah. It depends <clears throat> on results. Um, yeah. But, listen, I, I still – that's still – like, if you're a true race fan, like, you don't want to see restarts for the sake of wrecking each other. You know what I mean? Like, you, like the, the, I, if you – in my opinion, <clears throat> anyway, like, you want the best cars to win. And that's what happens at a race like yesterday. McDowell was the best car yesterday. And just so happened, he went out there and kicked our ass and didn't, ha- you know, Suarez is really good. They had a bad pit stop and, and he lost track position, never really got it back. You know, so it's, it, it, you know, that's what you want to see. I, there, in was my a, opinion, there was a stat out there this morning that said eight cars that started in the top 10 finished in the top 10. And you had Kyle Busch who blew a motor who probably would have also finished in the top 10. Ty Gibbs who got wrecked, he, he drove back almost to the top 10 from where he was at. So, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, listen, a lot of things were in that race yesterday that we've been asking for. No stage breaks. Um, in terms of stopping the race for, for the stage break. Don't throw a caution if we don't need one because a pace lap takes five minutes. Like, there were a lot of things that we've been asking for that they did yesterday. So, 
I mean, it, it, it was a pure it was a pure race. Yeah, uh, there but, was, that, but it almost felt like I was watching SCCA or something. Like it was just, just it just, I don't was know, just going on. Yeah, yeah, I felt like I felt like I, I made the comment to somebody that I felt like I was spotting the Rolex again because it's just like there's just cars every but like there, you, you there, know the, what I mean? the whole like, track was covered in cars. Yeah, <laughs> like you had us and Denny. We were kind of committed to a different strategy, trying to catch a caution at the right time, which if we get it at the right time, it's going to work out. But we didn't get it, and we, we got some stage points out of it. And that's the position we put ourselves in with not qualifying very well. So we did something different, and guess what? It didn't work out. But yeah, yeah. It, it could have. It very could have. Somebody could have got stuck in that gravel. I mean, somebody could have got bumped into the tires again. Um, and... I mean, looking at the playoffs right now, obviously Chase Elliott and Bowman coming to life a little bit more. I don't need fabricated. I'm going to tell you all something. If Jeff Gluck sees Chase Elliott this weekend, he said Chase Elliott's name 1,000 times on his podcast this morning. He is convinced that Chase Elliott is going to win this weekend at Watkins. He better not. (laughs) He is convinced that he's going to win. I was – we're – you know, we got obviously playoff implications. We were 15th, and we talked about last week, you know, 15th, 16th weren't safe because – the two road courses and Daytona coming. And uh, so, not, like, I kind of was resigned to my fate that somebody that I didn't need to win was going to win. And McDowell is honestly the lesser of two evils. Yeah, for us. Suarez you know wins, mean? yeah. You know, Suarez or, 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 or Chase, like, at least McDowell winning eliminated a guy that was Chase. Because if, if Chase would have won, that would have put Chase in and would have put McDowell probably uh, 10, 15 points behind us going into Watkins yeah, Glen. Yeah. You know, now at least we still have a 28-point cushion or whatever it was. So, like, towards the end of the race, I'm like, uh, I guess I want McDowell to win, <laughs> like, you know, like from a playoff standpoint. Yeah, because one of the three, we're going to knock you yeah, down a spot. One, no matter what, one of those three, top three, we're going to knock us out. So, that the the one, at least it was the guy that's chasing us in points that we now we've eliminated that. So, now we still have a decent cushion to 16th. Now we just got to hope. How, how do you all feel about – Back to back road courses like that, I hate. I don't think I don't like it because I don't. Either. I, I don't like it, but I don't either. I don't like it either. I had heard some talks over the summer that they really wanted to try and get Watkins Glen into the playoff next year, some way, somehow. But they were concerned about because school would be back in. How many campers would they really have, and would they have the big camping out? Because listen, Watkins Glen, as we know this weekend, dude, it's nuts. Yeah, it's it a huge turnout. Yeah. Everything's sold out around there for camping. So, but I, I'm not a fan of this back-to-back road course thing. No, me neither. Well, yeah, trust I, I'm me. not either. Definitely not for me. <laughs> All right. Well, just a reminder: tickets for the Dirty Mo Media Ultimate Experience are super close to selling out. So y'all better get on, get your tickets quick before they're gone. Bristol Night Race. That's Can't. all we need to I say. Mean, that's yeah. it. It's Brett's favorite race. Brett, the, the best suites in the business. It uh, is. View. And Brett, best Freddie, view. and TJ, and Mike Davis. I mean, what a combo. It is time for Spot On, Spot Off, presented by our friends at Moneyline. Hey, we appreciate Moneyline jumping on board. And, Freddie, if, uh, if anybody in here knows a little bit about Moneyline, I know it's you. Yeah, for sure. I, I seen Ryan and our and our friends at Moneyline yesterday at the racetrack. They were on our uh, they were on our car. They're the obviously the official finance partner at Twenty Three Eleven Racing. And man, we just had, we sat down, chatted about some cool stuff they got coming up, and 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 just uh, wanted everybody to learn more about Moneyline. Yeah, look, it's real easy to get free money. Just download the Moneyline mobile finance app today. Use promo code dollar sign Dirty Mo. Set up the direct deposit. And you can get up to $55 free. Absolutely free. I can already think of a few ways to use that money. Don't forget, use promo code dollar sign dirty mo and earn up to $55. On to our first topic. Kyle Larson unveils IndyCar and NASCAR schemes for the 2024 Indy 500 and Coke 600 double. Says his NASCAR Cup team is a perennial playoff contender so he doesn't mind focusing on Indy 500 for a month. Is there any year. way we can make this thing longer? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we got 49 sheets of paper because Andrew <laughs> thinks everything's supposed to be an essay. It's a, f- I I have a, re- it's a f- paragraph on spot on spot off. <laughs> Casey, you, you did to, amazing reading that, Casey, by the way. you go to page 57, <laughs> I have a revised version of that. Uh, That's funny because that was a sprint car number. They I actually won Knoxville was, with, too. I thought it was 86 because there looks like there's like 86 pages. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. God, what was the question? Spot Kyle Larson's <laughs> running two races. Do you like it or not? That's uh, uh, Spot on. <laughs> no, the, the, what it's not, getting not, at not, is... Not, not, not. 
Bah. Bah. See, he's basically like, saying that he can take away He's saying you take a month off. Yeah. Okay, Barbara Walters, defend yourself. Let's hear it, Andrew. Go ahead. Barbara Walters. I'm teeing it up for you guys. Are you spot on or up. spot off Freddy, for Larson Freddy, you know, you like focusing it? on IndyCar? Do you love it or do you not love it? <laughs> if you uh, agree, Freddie, if you agree with it, you're listen, spot on. I am spot <laughs> on that he can take a, he can take two months off if he likes because he's going to win a race next year and be in the playoffs <laughs> yeah. no matter what. Um, but listen, I think it's cool. I think the car looks cool. I don't know how you're going to tell that car apart from Scott Dis- Dixon's because they look the same. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's pretty a pretty historic photo to have Roger Penske and Rick Hendrick on both sides of you as a driver. I mean, the most successful Indy car owner of all time, the most successful. Uh, is he's not is he he's not running is he driving Penske? I don't know Penske. maybe no, I guess I think P- he's driving but, McLaren yeah but he it, yeah but he's McLaren. at the Penske track obviously yeah, 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 yeah. Roger on the track like what a, what an epic photo that was um I listen I'm gonna be spot off if it rains I was just gonna ask that what if there's a shower what if there <laughs> I seen Tyler Mon last night he was with us and he he's doing a double as well he's gonna he's gonna spot that's all awesome. races that's a cool experience I would think I would hope. Uh, he, did, he didn't have a cool experience last I'm night. spot on. <laughs> we'll all be tuning in, watching him, and <laughs> Kyle's one of the guys that I think could go there and run well. Yeah. He's going to be fast. I mean, I'd support I him so. running a sprint car or midget race right before I then think go it's into it. still insane. All them guys that run Indy are insane. Yeah. Like, oh, I like agree. Just imagine, run, what do they run down straight away, like 230-something? No, they yeah. average, t- yeah, over that, because they average like 230 a lap. Yeah, and then you just like looking down the front straightaway and at a 90-degree turn. Like. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's what we did. To, that's what we did on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should have uh, Chad's dad, Billy, on the I'm, show to talk oh. about that. I mean, more y'all talk about it. I'm, I'm spot off. This guy's crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy. And he, well, I mean, I guess we talk about the A main a little bit. I mean, like he, he just, says, he he thinks he's in more danger at Talladega than he does when he's in a sprint car. But man, it's Kyle Larson. Dude, I mean, I, did you watch the Nationals this weekend? Yeah, some of Did it. you see, I mean, leading up to it, man, there were some This I, there were some wild wrecks in those wild. sprint cars. One wreck, the one, I forget the guy's name now, he was in the five car, was like his wing like oh, disintegrated in the three, yeah. and then he just, I mean, plowed the fence. Yep, and that, in the, even in the, 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 the feature, I mean, they're sitting there showing Larson. I, I, at one point, I saw him bounce right rear off the fence on the straightaway, and I'm, these guys are popping tires on the entry. And I'm like, good lord! So it doesn't surprise me he's doing the IndyCar race. Should be fun. No stage breaks and a single caution allowed the Cup race to play out naturally. Spot on, spot off, Brett. Uh, spot on, and obviously this was a huge win for uh, Michael McDowell and his team. I mean, when you look at Michael's career and, and where he's been and, and how he's run, he certainly has been on the. The up and up the last two years. I mean, when Blake Harris got there last year to be his crew chief, we all felt like that car got immediately faster and more competitive. Did anybody have Michael McDowell winning this race yesterday? Absolutely not. I mean, he, maybe one in a million. I, I mean, this, this has been his most successful season. This, this, oh, absolutely. But this isn't a guy that you go, he's going to go out and win this weekend. He's a contender. Well, why wouldn't you say that? Well, because he's never won a race other than one race. And that's when two teammates took themselves out. He inherited the lead. Won the Daytona 500. TJ, you remember that? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> think you were the one, one of the ones that took, got took out, taken out. But, no, I mean, look, the, the way this thing played out, it was a pure race. We didn't have a lot of BS cautions, a lot of BS stuff go on that can change the outcome of the race. And, and, and so, huge shout-out to him. I mean, when you look at this team, listen, if he wins this race – um, this past weekend, and, and they hadn't picked up his option and he becomes a free agent, he immediately becomes desirable because you see – listen, it's, it's easy for these guys to go fast. They're race car drivers. It's not easy to win. It's not easy to know how to win. And for him to manage that race with the, a seven-time road course winner on your heels – who appeared to be going from 15 car lengths back to 10 car lengths back, it's easy to blow a corner. It's easy to screw up. So huge shout-out to him and his team. And this will be one of the biggest wins – in NASCAR history with David versus Goliath and David coming out on top. I mean, and, and I mean, I'm talking just not like a, a fluke. You know what I mean? Like just kicked our asses all day Absolutely. long. Like took the lead at lap whatever it was, five or six, six I felt I like. And, and, then, and then never, I mean, obviously lost the lead on pit cycles here and there, but was in like dominant all day long. Um, so as far as the stage breaks, uh, listen, we've asked for it on this show for years. And I think that this is what, is it the most exciting form of television? Probably not. But that, that's – I don't want manufactured races. Like, I want a race to play out naturally, and that's what happened yesterday. 
TJ. Yeah, I'm, I'm spot on for it. <clears throat> we don't need to. I'm okay with the fastest car. You know, he earned the he earned he earned the lead. He passed cars to get there. He qualified well. It was a complete weekend for him, and he didn't have to go through like you know. Obviously, there were stages. The back half of the field probably is going to pit, and then he's going to cycle behind him, and then have to go through it all. I just don't. I, His pit crew deserves some kind of an award because we know these aren't the all star guys that are on some of these job? other teams. Absolutely. Because you can look at the first pit stop. He lost the lead because of those guys. And I was like, man, it's going to be hard for him to win with this pit crew doing this all day. If that's a yellow flag stop, you don't just lose one spot, you lose 10, right? And I was like, man, I don't know if these guys can do this. I don't know if they can compete. And sure as hell, everybody from that point on, the crew chief executed the strategy, Michael executed in the cockpit, and obviously those guys executed on pit road. And, and shout outs to the crew chief, Travis Peterson, who, I mean, I remember when he was an intern. And he, he moved to North Carolina so his dad could be in motorsports. And now he's – I think this was his first crew chief job. And That's has awesome. A win at Indy. I don't know him yeah. at all. That's shout, awesome. shout out to Travis for coming to my birthday party last night. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. He was on – Well, I'm sure his wife was thrilled. He's pretty much due any day now, I think so. <laughs> he was at Hendrick when I was there on our car. Yeah. AJ Allmendinger's got a baby coming in today, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good uh, timing. I think this is timing from when, like, the off season was. This is, like, 10 months. So, I guess that – Makes sense. Um, anyways, so it was hard to miss on the broadcast, but coming to the checker, you saw the 10 car stalled or stopped on pit road, I think for like a lap or two. And Brett, you mentioned the fact that they did, they could have called a few cautions. They didn't. We talk about on the show consistency. I mean, what, what do you guys think now? Like, should they have thrown the caution for that? Or if we're trying to be consistent because they throw it in the past? I think he ran out on the last lap, didn't he? Yeah, he ran out on the last lap. Yeah, I don't the white flag was probably already out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't ever saw it. it must've, he must have ran out somewhere over in the other side of the track. But, I mean, I, I didn't have any. The only time that, uh, that you could have possibly got a caution, there, there was two. There was a couple things. There was debris in turn one for about 25 laps or so that they never – somebody finally hit it and knocked it out of the way. I don't know what it was. It could have been a piece of rubber yeah. or something. I'm sure they saw it because we were calling it in because we needed a caution at the time. Um, and then AJ. When AJ spun, he kind of sat there for a little while and mm. and then took off. He was stuck, and he couldn't get going. Yeah. He couldn't get yeah. the car well, fired, and they, it was a while. Yeah. yeah. But they know they know when you're way out of the way like that, and they know these cars, have, you have to cycle the ECU or whatever it is. And they even came on the radio one time when one guy stopped and said, hey, he's just cycling, and he'll be taken off in a second. And uh, – he, he, you know, he took back off. I think, I think they called it great. I got to give. If AJ you were credit. sitting there as long as AJ were, you would have had a heart attack. You would have, have a completely a different perspective. I'd have wanted a caution, but I mean, only because I wanted to catch back up. It was a long time. Yeah, I mean, don't wreck that. <laughs> he got wrecked. And then I heard him say he's going to wreck the twelve. And guess yeah, what apparently happen. there was some going on before that, though. I don't know the story behind it, but apparently well, there he was still some, got wrecked. I, I'm not saying he didn't. I gave him credit for. Driving through that gravel trap all the way to that access road. Did you? I didn't <laughs> so see that. That was he, pretty impressive. When he re, when he come back on, he was going faster than the cars were uh, that out of turn four. He had more speed than they did. He butted near somebody and he was flying. Flying. What was tire fall off like yesterday? Because I didn't have a monitor in front of me. <laughs> it was about a second over a tire, a fuel run. Wow. So yeah, not much at all. No, much. not a lot. No. A little bit, but and not. that helps those new guys. That helps all those guys yeah. that have never done this before. Which I thought was interesting. You know, I listened to um, SVG on Dale's show last week, and he was talking about like wanting to get out of the supercar racing right now because. They've gone to a deal where it's similar to us. Like they have a car, all the same, all the identical parts, everything. He said the the setup window is actually narrower over there. Like the and he said the problem is that the they can't keep tires on the car. He said so their cars are like a blast to drive. He says but then, you know, you got to run like forty percent the whole race. To, so he goes everybody's just out there running half throttle, like you know, following each other around in the race. He says that's why I love Chicago so much. He says because you can just run Get as it. hard as you can the whole run, you know, and and mm -hmm. and that lends itself to like no tire wear, you know, no tire fall off because you just you know it's. it's but it, 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 <clears throat> going back to Chicago though, man, how many guys made mistakes there? A lot. Oh yeah. And how many there was there was big prices to pay for the mistakes, right? And. We go to these tracks now, and there just isn't any pump. We're going to go to another one this week, Watkins Glen. It, like, listen, credit to Corey LaJoy. I seen Corey on um, 
Friday at the truck race. And we're just talking to him for a little while. And he's like, man, I got a feeling this thing's going to go green to checker. He's like, I just, he's like, just the way this place lays out. He goes, I, and, and aside from Haley wrecking on lap, whatever that was, two or three, yeah, we getting went, wrecked. We, you know, we are getting wrecked. Uh, we went green the rest of the way. So, I mean, so he saw that kind of, he kind of saw that coming. Well, more SVG topics. Spot on, spot off. SG, SVG runs around the top 10 most of the race, running the best out of the road course. This is race. like Jason Schultz all over again when he had an infatuation with Kyle mm -hmm. Busch. Now Andrew's got the SVG yeah. posters all over his bedroom, I guess. He's going to come in wearing an SVG uh, shirt. We need, to get you, we need to get you introduced. I went to the bathroom with a guy yesterday. He was in the bathroom what, when what? I came in. This is... It's the, this is the first mention of him on the show sheet. We've talked you about him a to, ton. You went to the bathroom with him? Well, I was in the bathroom and he came in. Yeah. Was there a conversation? Did, did it look as funny? No, as, uh, same it, thing happened with me and Adam Sandler. Like, Adam Sandler walked into a bathroom in Vegas and I was like, that's Adam Sandler. I was like, can't say hey did, to him in a bathroom. Uh, did you? Yeah, I mean, what, what, more detail. We, hey, so man. I didn't say hey to SVG. Hey, no. The best bathroom trip Brett's ever been on was when he stood at the urinal next to Brad Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie took a picture. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm using the bathroom beside of Brad Dart. I think I, I tweeted. I'd it. have to go. Did he say hi him. to you? <laughs> hey, Brett. Nice watch. Anything? I mean, <laughs> he's he's tall. <laughs> they don't make those things big enough for Brad Dart. Those, those he, dividers. Yeah, between yeah. Them. <laughs> he's seven <laughs> feet tall. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about? Oh, SVG. SVG. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know what everybody else was expecting. I think we talked about last week. He ran exactly like we figured he would. I thought he did a good job. Yeah. yeah I mean, and listen, he, I said last week he's going to run 10th to 15th. He ran 10th, 12th all day long, literally. Yeah. That's and then, and that's, bit, a, that's a very good job. Like, you know, you look at the other guys, he ran top 10. Everybody else was mid 20s. Or I'll tell you, you know. what, what, one thing that I noticed here, maybe you saw it too. A lot of the, a lot of the guys that was their first race had penalties on pit road mainly. This guy clean all day and that's what you have to do too and a lot of them guys did have penalties yeah i mean and they made mistakes like you've seen kobayashi blow the corner a couple times oh yeah yeah i saw uh, i seen rockefeller he knocked somebody out of the way at one point i think it was the i asked brad if he saw it like go through the go mirror by him yeah and he's like yeah i saw it i'm like i didn't tell you man because it wasn't any use in telling you <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> I mean, good there's nothing i could do to help do? you yeah hey look out <laughs> hey here it comes <laughs> oh but yeah i, don't I thought know. it was a cool stat uh, he was only got to have two top tens in his first two races since Terry, Terry Labonte. Yeah. yeah, really? That's cool. Yeah, Terry Labonte. I mean, <laughs> that's been a hot minute. Yeah, but I mean, we are running his strength, so too. So absolutely, different ball game if he's at Martinsville or somewhere like oh, that. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh boy. You okay over there? Yeah, I'm all right. I need a water. Is there oh a water? yeah, I can go get one. A good time it. to show you that clip of that guy and girl. <laughs> 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 Wait, that video. Oh, that video, yeah. <laughs> All right, Casey, what is the next one? <laughs> SVG, boxers or briefs? <laughs> <laughs> spot on, spot off. Ford had two wins in the first 21 races of the season, and they've gone three for three in the last three. Brett. I mean, good for off. Ford, right? I mean, you, uh, you, you got guys winning that I didn't necessarily see winning. I mean, we talked about – it takes a hot minute to figure out how to win. I mean, Chris Buescher had one win in the Cup Series, and it was a fuel mileage win. It wasn't a legit butt whooping. And then here you have him, boom, he goes out here, wins back-to-back -back races. So if you had Chris Buescher winning back-to-back -back races and Michael McDowell had it winning a race this year, I don't think anybody was there for that. So spot on for them. Obviously, uh, they need more speed in, in a lot of their cars. I mean, you look at some of the Penske cars are struggling every week. The 21 and 2 are just flat-out slow. 14 was good yesterday. He needed a good run. He pulled out a top 10 run, uh, Chase Briscoe did, at his home state, which is cool. But, look, he's been racing B.J. BJ McLeod every week at some of these big ovals. So, uh, big test. We'll see what, what those guys look like when we get into playoffs because, obviously, we're at a road course and a plate race between now and then. Um, and, and, but the same, like the same thing I said last week, they have to show me this at the mile and a half that we're, are going to make up majority of the playoffs because I think that's the only place I've noticed they they struggle at. The short tracks, road courses obviously lend itself to, to driver. You know, McDowell's a phenomenal road racer. Um, so, you know, that – What do you consider Michigan? Uh, it's not a mile and a half. I, mean, I consider it a two-mile super speedway just like you guys run good at Daytona. But and you got to lift. Where, I mean, not much. 
<laughs> Everyone was lifting, but pretty much the nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> I a lot of most of our guys were saying, "Don't lift all the way out of the throttle." That was that was our deal all day long. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't. We'll see. And listen, they 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 have stepped it up lately, and it might carry over to mile and a half. But just on past performance, I, you know, I need to see that come to fruit fruition. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, at, at, in the playoffs, <laughs> uh, I'm spot on. Obviously, big uh, big wins. Uh, probably not. Who, if you had to pick, you know, if you had to pick guys that you thought it could have been, these guys. I mean, McDowell at a road course, we've we've picked him many times to win, and he's finally broke through. I mean, we've we've picked him to win road courses for years, and he's finally broke through. I, I so. picked him this week, by the way. Yeah, <coughs> good time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, spot on. A lot of work to do still. Playoffs are coming, so. Um, and, and Here's the biggest statement this thing makes about Ford. It's extremely difficult to win a Cup race if you're not a key partner to an OEM. Eric Jones last year went in Darlington, right? Huge freaking statement. You guys don't realize how big of a statement that is. This is the exact same thing. Now the question becomes, what's Ford going to do? Are they going to actually get in here and help these guys? Because you got an extra guy in the playoff that you probably weren't counting on having in. You know what I mean? And it's not like he knocked another Ford out. So, I mean, you, you, you got, to me, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of conversations going on with OEM movement. You know, obviously, legacies moved, but there's a lot of talk about what does Stuart Haas do in a couple years? What does Front Row do in a couple years? Even Colleg Racing, what do they do in a couple years? So, um, this is a big win for the little guy. There's, listen, I'm telling you, there's, there's team, Ford is shopping. You know, there, there's teams that would surprise people that are, that are, you know, being approached by Ford to, to come over there. And, and you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Looking ahead to the championship, do you think Ford is the manufacturer of the beat? Looking no. at the rest of you, no, the not races? at all. They're last. They'd be the last one I'd pick, just based on the the tracks that are coming up. And I mean, you never know. I mean, you, you never know. I, I, I listen. I think that like, like last year, Blaney and and Logano dominated that Phoenix race. So I think that if they get there, they they would be. You know, they're they're right there. I still think. I still think Truex is the guy to beat right now. Just you know, speed, just speed and consistency. Um, but still, I mean, you got you got to. And just, I just wanted to mention this because Andrew brought it up. Um, SVG drives a Chevy. Just, so, <laughs> so he, I just, you know, but, I just but wanted to may, slip that I in mean, there for him. You never know. Never know. <laughs> he wears white um, uh, fire underwear. Oh, oh is it? Yeah. Oh, good, good to know. Yeah. Andrew, you might want to know that for the. Bush. I do know that. For Brett, sure. I mean, Brett for knows sure. that. For sure. Yeah, I was in the bathroom. He was in the bathroom with him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Andrew's going to stop. He helped him zip up his suit when he was done. Was Schultz <laughs> following well, his, him? His zipper was in the back. <laughs> Jason Schultz has been following around everywhere, videoing him. So I wouldn't be surprised if he followed his him. His zipper in there. was in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. All right, listen up. If you guys are planning a fun vacation. Uh, Freddie and I love a good tailgate. TJ and I love to go buy iRacing stuff. Mm. But no matter what you need, man, Moneyline can help you out. Yeah, our new sponsor, Moneyline, is the all-in-one mobile finance app that has been part of the racing community for years and is dedicated to helping people like you take control of your money and make good things happen. With Moneyline, you can borrow, save, invest, and earn money all in one place. That's right. And they want to chip in a little something to help get you started. That's right. Hey, I'm all about helping get me you started. Know what we call that easy money. Easy money. Use the code all on the money line app, Dirty Mo. That's dollar sign Dirty Mo, dollar sign D I R T Y M O on the money line app to get up to 55 free dollars. Already have the money line app? Great. Make sure to follow them on social media because they are looking to hook race fans up with opportunities to win some really great stuff, including cash giveaways, exclusive on track experiences, and customer rewards like next level grills for your tailgates. It doesn't get much better than that. With the money line app, you're one step closer to getting your financial future on the right path. Visit moneyline.com slash hot pass for more info. Kyle Larson gave us a lot to talk about on this DBCA main segment because he... Wire to wire. Yeah, won the, his second Knoxville Nationals. I mean, what most would consider the biggest sprint car race of the year. Um, huge payout, for sure. Tons of other racing. I mean, every single day this week we had Dirt Vision on. I don't know about you guys, but... I did, I, did watch, uh, I did watch Dirt Vision every night when I got back to the hotel, even though we got back late Friday, uh, pretty late on Saturday, thanks to a late start and a rain, a little rainstorm. Um, 
again. Yeah, the only thing, I actually fell asleep before the A main on Saturday, and I woke up and right before I woke up and watched the A main, and when I went back to bed, it was like one thirty in the morning. So that's pretty late for a, a big race like that. We, I think we talk about all the time about like making things easy to understand for our fans. You know, like the points and stuff like yeah. that. One thing that I will never understand is the Knoxville qualifying format like i don't know what the hell's going on at any time like i know it's points based and like yeah it's because obviously deal, i was yeah. watching windham and like windham qualified 10th started eighth in his heat race because they did like an eight car inverse seventh in his heat race because the eight car invert then the next night he qualified 10th and started on the pole of his heat race <laughs> and like it was like i'm like what the f- yeah. is going on i have no idea That's but i appreciate windham he was he was looking out for me this week because i don't think he made name main the whole week so he let me go to bed early pretty much every night mm-hmm. um well no he did make it i guess on the hard knocks night but uh i'd love to i, I I'd think to they give him like when i first turned it on on saturday they were like at the e or whatever and that's still like you need to have to down to the last like two or three like the last chance qualifier maybe one more before that but it's been the same for years i'm sure well so. shout out to wikipedia because i wouldn't have understood anything without the announcers streets. do a good job he, of explaining. yeah they do but just like the format in general there's so much going on like i i mean i essentially just went to his timeline and looked at it. i don't know a lot about how dirt cars are set up, but those guys do a really good job of telling you what's broke and where it would it, you know, whenever the, uh, what's the kid's name? Chase. Um, Rodman. Rodman. Yeah. He does a good job of explaining it and what's broke, if it's fixable or not. And, uh, you know, he'll tell you these guys are getting ready to pull the whole front axle out of the thing and have another one in there in two minutes or less. And they've got all there. And like, like there's so many like um, Johnny Gibson, obviously the outlaw announcer, like yeah. sometimes like he does a good job. Sometimes Blake I need to turn Anderson. him down. Blake Anderson's phenomenal on the all stars deal. Uh, Chase Robbins. Great. Yeah. Our, obviously, Georgia. We She's yep. around sometimes. But I like, heard her yesterday. They did, did you? Yeah. That's nice. Saw her on pit road. Yeah, I saw her yesterday, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that deal there was 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 pretty wild. Yeah. Well, this week, sh- tons of more dirt racing action. Millbridge is back. So Millbridge, you can catch us take there a drink. Wednesday. Oh. Yep. I'm um, telling you right now, if you want to take, if you want to get hammered today, listen to the teardown with Jeff Cluck, and every time he says Chase Elliott, take a drink. It'll be worse than that ACDC song. We'll do that song. tomorrow on the way. What's to, the ACDC song? We'll do that tomorrow on the way to. Uh, what's the dr- the, the drink in ACDC song? Uh, Thunderstruck or whatever. Thunderstruck. Yeah. yeah, it's worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> So you say he's infatuated with Chase right now. Yeah. Is he worse than nobody else is going to win this weekend? Chase nobody else has a chance. Nope. Oh, not a chance. Not a chance. No, he, not AJ Amendinger. Not not nobody. Is speaking of touch. speaking of speaking of getting drunk, how did you? Yeah, you went over to me and say hi to Jordan on Saturday night, right? Bianchi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was drunk. <laughs> Well, he was dressed to kill. He, oh, he's always dressed Didn't to kill. Didn't up plenty. He usually is. Didn't end up like Bob, we, did he, with a red mark on his neck, some, did he? We did some birthday shots on Saturday I night. I did skip that part. You did skip that part. Yes. You, that was very smart on your behalf. But, uh, yes. yeah, Jordan was feeling no pain. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Loved every second of it. He also, by the way, was right about Noah Gregson last week. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, way, just so you know. Yeah. yeah. yeah Weird right. how that turns out. I know all you people were attacking him, saying he didn't get it right, even after he got it right, and they confirmed he got it right. You guys were, who's? Well, Noah asked to be out, so. He didn't say how he was getting out. He said he wouldn't return and would part ways. They're parting ways. And guess what happened? They parted ways. <laughs> they parted ways. Uh, have we heard where he might be going? Uh, I would assume since training. Since training. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the future. You racing. asked. Uh, no, I haven't heard anything. All right. Well, you can probably, Andrew, you can probably it's gonna move that to It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for Noah to get back. Like, I think it's going to be hard. Yeah. It, it, like it, the only thing I, I he has to go back to the Xfinity series I think because there's I don't think there's any worthwhile cup opportunities out there and I mean I don't think he's getting in the he 10 need, like go back and win yeah like go back like the best thing the the, the what I what I said to somebody the other night was it, and like Larson did this obviously go win, win. Just like win. just go win whatever the hell you're gonna get in just go win and make yourself attractive again and and there's there's probably decent there's gonna be decent Xfinity rides open that he Ryan can get Priest in. John Hunter that's yeah. the approach they took yeah just go back and win yep well don't forget to catch all your dirt racing action on Dirt Vision and catch us on Dirt Vision this Wednesday let's move on to Reaction Theater. Uh-oh. Who is the idiot on f***ing Dirty Modo that cannot put his phone on mute 
every week there's text message things going on. So we're getting calls from for all the shows. <laughs> we're, now, now we're just bashing everybody. Yeah. Like we got Jared Hate last week. Yeah. Whose whose phone is it? Is it a uh, Chopper? Producer or? Travis would not tell me whose phone it was. Uh, why? So well, does I don't Travis know. produce that one? Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. We'll probably play Travis. It must be his phone then. It's probably it's Travis. Probably phone. Travis's phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. what time do they record? Because I'll just call Latart in the middle. Of, Latart's uh, on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Latart's on it. I'll call Stevie during the show. We'll see if it rings. It changes <laughs> every week, but it's oftentimes Thursday mornings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know who, whoever it is, but if they're that, <laughs> that maybe that'd be what an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Which Chopper did uh, to credit to Chopper, he did have the winner yesterday. Um, really? He said, you know, bet, mm. bet. Uh oh, what are we doing? You get a reaction theater. <laughs> Oh, just text I'm trying to get it to go bloop. <laughs> <laughs> Here, just turn it on loud, Brad. I'll this is the Michael McDowell fan club calling in. Um, I would like to inform you all that we have a new tub. However, this tub is for winners, so good vibes only. Um, we are bringing a bass bomb, but only one because we are front row motorsports. We have a small budget. So one bass bomb, awesome time. Shout out, Michael McDowell. McDowell, the McGoat. The McGoat. That's <laughs> oh. that's gonna stick. Yeah. The McGoat. Who's texting you? <laughs> Y'all are like twelve, seriously. The McGoat. The McGoat. Hey. I, hey, I did hear Larson <laughs> in his interview in Knoxville. He called uh, shots the um, the Knox father. <laughs> 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 Which I started last. It's like one fifteen in the morning. I'm like, Jesus, what is his ear? Uh, the mint goat. Listen, I, the the winner's tub sounds a lot more fun than the loser's tub. Like oh, the, usually is. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> usually is. Hi, yes. I'd like to file an insurance claim against Joe Logano. Uh, I came outside and my truck's got yellow scratches all over it, and I'm just going to assume it's him because that <laughs> shit everything else today. So, uh, yeah. Accurate. Very accurate. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> McDriver. All seven of us McDowell fans are going to have O'Doul's and Mark Nelly in the shower tonight. Yeah! <laughs> O'Doul's. <laughs> That's pretty funny. In the shower. In the shower. So yeah. win or lose. Yeah, you're, you're, getting, getting, you're getting in the bath yeah. no matter what. Oh, God. Uh, O'Doul's. What? Like, who drinks non-alcoholic? Who the f*** drinks beer for the taste? <laughs> like, I, this beer t- I'm, I drink my fair share of beer, and I've never been like, man, this beer tastes amazing. <laughs> I just want to have one. F- the alcohol. I just want to drink a beer. You can't tell me the first time you try to Budweiser, you're like, oh, this, this is good. This is so yeah. good. I just drink enough to forget that I don't like the taste. So yeah. it's fine. <laughs> All right. Ty Gibbs. Yeah, Ty Gibbs. He's a bitch. Oh, Baby back you want to try to do a burnout in front of the field, going all the way around the track. Now, that would have been cool if nobody was on the freaking track. You know what you look like? Wait for it. I'll see you next Tuesday. Get up off the track. You ain't worth a damn. Now, also, why are you trying to wreck Andy Lau? What did he do? That boy, he's a respectful driver trying to get around that track, and you were mad because you got wrecked by somebody else. I wish I could punch him in the d- Oh, P.S. Carson Hosevar is still a d- <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, Jesus, take the wheel. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks for calling, Andy. <laughs> 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 um, I didn't know any of that. I mean, I don't know. I was I was on my way to the car when the burnouts were going on. I don't think I did see. I think he was, likes Ty Gibbs. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure he's a big fan. There were cars like stopped because he did a burnout like the middle, and they were waiting for it to clear because they couldn't go through to hit him. Oh, gotcha. So, I don't know who it was. Now I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Hey, TJ, you don't suck. Liar. It's a flute. The guy's playing the flute. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's your band camp guy, Brett. I wonder if he's playing it. Oh, no. <laughs> And there's your flute. Yes. Uh, at least he didn't talk while he was playing. That <laughs> might be my favorite call ever. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Is, it, one time? is it odd that that guy said you didn't suck and then he put a flute? <laughs> 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 
at band camp? <laughs> We're going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of questions that could be asked with that Ooh, one. But Good job. Uh, I'm good job. surprised there was no Blaney fan. What was fans? the song? It was... Uh, Oh, the Blaney fan called in. I guess he called last Monday when we were taping, and so we missed we missed the call, and he was uh, upset that we didn't play. It. That's cool. And he called this week to, to tell uh, you call that he was upset. Idiot. Yeah. Oh, so, so oh, where's that call? Show? I can I can I can find it. Yeah, yeah where's what? that call? We need to pass the call. message along. No, we need that call. You right. that, that should have made that. Should that be how a does no that not? Okay. Anytime Somebody, anybody yeah. listen. Anytime <clears throat> anybody calls in and calls you an idiot, Andrew, that goes on the show. No matter what it is, no matter what it's about. <laughs> oh, then there's a lot there's more. <laughs> good. That's what we need. We really do need a link where people can go listen to all of the calls. I will yeah. listen like, to all of them. Honestly, oh can we? You send it to us. No. Now? You I, might not want to do that. I, I, yeah, you, <laughs> might, you might not want to do that. You, you, might, you might not Careful like what it. you wish for. <laughs> I, I need some new attorneys around here. <laughs> yeah, you Shane, might not want like that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Moving on to Ask DBC. Don't forget to send us your questions on Twitter using hashtag Ask DBC. I promise we watch or we read them all. Um, first, first one is from Nathan. What's hmm. the Sketchiest father scene that you spotted the race from? Duh. Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> well, they mm. fixed it. North Wilkesboro. Yeah, North, oh, North Wilkesboro was, was bad. Yeah, that I forgot was about what, that was, what was wrong with Atlanta before? It held all our spotter egos up, though. Yeah, it did. It did. Thank God it was strong enough to hold If you just went by sketchy, egos. you got to go to North Wilkesboro because that thing swayed. Yeah, and that thing was sketchy. And it, it moved. That, like, that, Atlanta is equally as sketchy. Atlanta, so they fixed Atlanta. Oh, they, they it, did. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there, they've, they've, Secured. So Atlanta used to have, uh, like a, a basically Bruh. a wire yeah, running in front say, of you yeah. with with a little stanchions, and they the stanchions were in. held down with sandbags, <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was pretty sketchy. Uh, but now they have they have mounted those stanchions in, and then we have two or three. I'm wires. Telling you, I couldn't. I is I don't like heights. Rail too? I know people think I'm crazy when I say I don't like heights, and I'm a spotter. I don't like heights. I don't. And I look down, it freaks me out. I had to sit down that entire race. I couldn't stand Atlanta? up. My knees would literally get weak, and I was thought I was going to pass out. Atlanta or North Atlanta? Sport? Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, it's because I, I need something to hold on to. I need a rail. Apparently, yeah. well, that you didn't little look cable wasn't a rail. Uh, off the back of the stand at North Wilkesboro, because if you looked off the back of it and see how much it was moving and how far it was down, you might not have. You'd have been. You'd have I know uh, Hirschman was not doing well up there. He didn't. He wasn't a fan of that one either. Nah, <laughs> it wasn't. Rocky Ryan when he spotted, he used to walk out there on the edge of the roof and oh. I'm like, get back, dude. You're giving me a heart he did attack. It like Texas, like he would walk out there. Oh yeah. He might be my what an idiot <laughs> today. This next one is from Olivia. What is the best and worst food you've ever had at a racetrack? I don't. I mean, I don't think I've ever chicken had fingers, it. homestead, vomited. You did? Oh yeah, food poisoning. Yikes! Mm. Yep, and a yellow and black tent. There's a yeah, the black tent with like yellow pinstripes. Yeah. So you ain't going back here. Never. Yeah. I, it makes That's my stomach turn. The best, the best, the 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 one that stands out to me that I remember. I don't know if I mean best was. Yeah, I guess it was the best. But um, the used to be them tenderloin sandwiches. Remember that breaded tenderloin Ch- sandwiches. Chucky's, I think it was like Chucky's little food truck or yeah. whatever. They used to come to a bunch of races. Those were those were probably some of the best racetrack food. I'm, I've I'm had. here for the Grotto Pizza at Dover. Oh, the, I like the, that. Let me tell a funny story That's about good. Grotto Pizza at Dover. Yeah. So Lam- I'm behind Lambert in line. We're doing it. The, the little stand is right there behind the spotter stand. And Lambert walks up to the window, and it was um, let me get this right. It was three dollars mm-hmm. a slice. Or no, maybe four dollars a slice, and three dollars for a drink. So Lambert walks up and says, "I'll do a slice of pizza and uh, and a coke, please." And the girl goes, "Well, if you'd like, we have a special. It's two slices of pizza and a coke for ten dollars." And Lambert's like, "Okay, great." Oh no, it was I, it, whatever it was, it was no deal. Yeah. Like it was, it was just you're just buying two <laughs> slices did. of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like three dollars, three dollars, and four dollars, so, something like that. I'm I'm also here for the Lions Club in New Hampshire. Get yeah. Oh that's, yeah, that's, you that's know one year, spot. one year they handed us uh, some some free pizza coupons for Grotto, and we could use them down there at the little tent deal. Wow. So we did, yeah. So yeah. also would, there there, there was Grotto. a time when Bojangles delivered chicken to the roof <laughs> yeah, at Arlington. Yeah, times. Yeah, that wasn't a bad thing either. Yeah, that, no, was, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we could always go every year. We go down to Grotto there, and somebody brings up a whole a whole pizza. What, what I yeah. love, Casey, at the track for food is local food. Yeah. I don't like. The freaking traveling circus that sometimes we see at these racetracks, or where you got to buy it from the band, and it's the hamburger. It get, the hamburger in the crock pot makes me the mask. It really bothers you. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to f- up a hamburger, but I'm gonna tell you how you f- 
it up. You put it in a crock pot with a bunch of water to keep it warm. <laughs> like I, I appreciate the food trucks, the local guys I, that come out. Wh- when I went to that tractor pull that time, I'd never seen so you many food fit trucks. fit right into the tractor pool. I, I love the yeah. tractor pool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if looking at the spotter sand from off the back at Gateway. That's what I was going to say. There was some, and they you could smell it. It was so good smelling. Yeah. Gateway I, has a <clears> bunch <throat> of food, yeah. like local food trucks. Yeah, it was awesome. Food trucks are awesome. They, but they've done a good job, I feel like, of bringing out more local flavor, <clears> local <throat> restaurants, too, to racetracks yeah. lately. I did almost get sick at Dover, though, because, and this is the restaurant across the street at the casino. Um, the great, steakhouse? <clears throat> great food. Uh, but I got a Caesar salad, and when it came out, it had the anchovies on it. And I'm looked at. I don't do seafood, so I looked at. It, I'm like, like it was like that video that I showed you last <laughs> week. It was just like that. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing up food. That's yeah. one thing I'm good at. Moving on to what an idiot. Do you have anything from Indy? Uh. I've decided that I want to send Ricky Stenhouse to Russia to race. <laughs> I don't want to send anybody Sponsored by around. Ukraine. I wouldn't want to send anybody to Russia ever. He's my one idiot. <laughs> oh, because he started a world war. He started a world war. It's hard to beat a bigger idiot than that. My, my one idiot has to go to, uh, you know, I think you, got, you called this guy an idiot a couple weeks ago, the driver of the 24 car, which my good friend Nick Payne spots for. Um, I thought it was he, Brett's friend. He, <laughs> yeah, he decided, he did not, nobody has told uh, Connor Mosack, I think, that... Um, they put a corner between turn six and turn eight. There's there's another there's a turn, turn seven there. in there. Yeah, because uh, he he didn't he he decided to just skip that one and drive straight through our door on uh, on Saturday. Oh, I wondered what happened so, to you. Yeah, we were actually side uh. by side with Hemrick, and he 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 went bowling for colleague. Like he just come in there and and cleaned us all out. Mm-hmm. I got a video of it. I could show you. But uh, so last time that happened, the. Uh his crew chief said that the driver from the other car needs to be walking back to the hauler. So the last, so what I've seen is this guy runs Josh off there, cleans out the college cars. So there's a, there's a um, trend. There's a trend here. Yeah, he, he's, he's an idiot. We'll go mm. with that for now. <clears throat> Who you got, TJ? Um, it was a quiet day yesterday. It was kind of quiet. Other than Logano and Ricky. There was a car that came down there and stopped in front of us where he zigzagged through the grass. Freddie, you remember that guy? And he could have went to the runoff. Was the 15? <laughs> it was the 15, I think, wasn't it? Was it? No, nah, it wasn't the 15. It was one of the Rick Ware cars. No. It was Button. Yeah, it was Button, I think. I don't think it was the The one 15. I saw, like, he blew, like, he just went through the grass and it was like. No, because it was Brett. Was it Saturday? You're talking about Saturday? I can't remember which day it was. I think it was the 34 was, stopped down by us. The guy that was spotted for it was your turn one guy who <laughs> rode America that one time. <laughs> <laughs> that he thought he was at a plate race at Road America. Yeah, yeah. That, he he <laughs> should have spotted for SVG. That would have went well. The guy that wouldn't shut up to Out a driver that the only talked. Then turned around, stop. When he could have just went past the past the opening and and stop, pulled out of the way. What do you got? Bowling. Yeah. Who wrecked Ty Gibbs yesterday? Uh, I think Logano. That, that was. It was that Logano. That's it started back here, and it, the guy wrecked up. Logano here. did. Like, Logano did what he did last year, and just went into turn one, seventy four cars too deep, like a wreck and, ball. and on the bottom, and just when I saw when I saw him, like because they come to our view right around the end of pit wall, he was already like sideways, like he had the brakes locked up and was sliding into okay. the pack of people. So I'll tell you how, also. So he's sitting on the inside, right by the curb. Yeah. And we're coming through there, and I'm like, all right, Brad, when you get here, stay to the left, stay to the left. And then he turns right and cross right in the middle of like cars coming in there, and I'm like, he's moving, go to the right, go to the right, and like we almost like it gets close. It, it was like when there's cars coming at you, the last thing that you should do is move at that point because everyone knows where you're sitting when you're sitting. So what's it's even harder to miss you when you're moving, you know. So well, speaking of idiots, Andrew, we want to hear you get called one. So here you go, tee it up. Well, since Blaney was almost invisible this weekend, I'm just going to give you my idiot of the week. And that's going to be Andrew, because I did call in last week, and I left a banger of a message for y'all. So, Andrew, if I see you at Bristol next month, we're going to have to have a talk about it. Go 12! <laughs> Go 12! <laughs> I kind of want to hear his call from last week. Yeah. Sure thing. A it banger. A banger. Old oh, Blaney did pretty good today. Got him a top 10. So we ask you, please, just um, pray for the Chase Elliott fans. They're probably in the bathtub, but... Plugged in toasters. Go 12. <laughs> go uh, go 12. Go 12. That's he's going to sign off all the time. Oh, gosh. All right. What do we got to go to next? Picking. Oh, we got to do No. no we've no, got to we... move on to our Birch Gold That's Gold Award. What's that mean? 
that's gold. What, what are we doing here? Uh, well, the opposite of what an idiot. Oh, so we're going to praise we're, people we're on here. We're going to give some compliments out. I don't know if y'all know what that means, but Birch Gold wants to make sure you know. Again, at Indianapolis, the place is immaculate. Clean, people are nice, the place is un- it is unreal. Um, I can see why there's still 70,000 people there, which is an enormous crowd for a, a couple race. Yeah. Anywhere. Um, they do a great job with it. So, I, I mean, Roger and his whole group, that everyone that has a, anything to do with it, uh, and, a, and a full weekend, too. I mean, there was an IndyCar race. So you got to see an IndyCar race. You got to see an Xfinity race, a cup race. So much going on. So My, my gold award, um, uh, I'm willing to buy this guy a gold tooth if he's willing to wear it because <laughs> the fact of the matter that Freddie Kraft made it 41 times around the sun <laughs> is a, a moment of gold we should all celebrate. I want an entire grill, not a tooth. So, <laughs> so I would like to congratulate Freddie. There's no question the moment. <laughs> Over there. Well, it's turning 41. I want to I play. I want to play this back to uh, Wednesday morning and yeah. see if you're still happy about my birthday tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But gold teeth on me. How about that? I love it. I love it. Uh, I, my uh, Birch, that's gold winner this week is going to be uh, Michael McDowell. I mean, the guy went out there and, and, and needed a win to get in the playoffs. Uh, he was actually, you know, right there on the cut line battling, but eliminated that prospect by just just going out there and I got another one. kicking our ass yesterday. I've got one more. Yes. Uh-oh. I'm going to give it to uh, Travis Peterson because this is a guy that ran Michael out of gas at the Coliseum. And <laughs> that's hard I mean, to do. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and I don't like when he. Um, where did they barely make him? Atlanta. When it, after Atlanta, I literally sent him a text message. Said, "Hey," and he said, "I don't want to hear any fuel mileage jokes anymore because they barely made it." And uh, I'm like, "Good job." So way to uh, totally. Uh, what do they say? And you redeem yourself. Totally redeem yourself. Yeah, totally redeem. You yep. had two gloves I, I the whole time. I also want to add to this. How many drivers stopped to congratulate him on on the track? I mean, it was. So cool to well, see the entire industry showing their support for him. I mean, he's a man of faith. He's got a big family. He adopts a lot of kids, and he takes great care of them. And, um, yeah, I mean, well, well, well respected guy and a hard racer. People yeah. don't realize how hard he can race. I mean, he's got the talent. Again, never been in great stuff. So this this win is way bigger than anybody's he, ever going to give him credit the for. kind of guy. Like, we I, we had a, a big run-in with him at um, Bristol that year. I think it was the All-Star race. You know, he wrecked us. And uh, But still, I mean, I probably kind of on here. God knows what I said that week about him here. But still, to this day, every time I see Michael in the garage, we stop and talk. You know yep, what I mean? Yep. Like, it's just the kind of guy he is. Like, you stop mm-hmm. and have a conversation pretty much every time, so, or at least a wave or something. He rolled up next to me at a stoplight leaving here one day, you know, just yelling back and forth. But just a great, a good guy. And, and you know, like you said, though, he's, he, he races hard, and we, we've had our fair share of battles. But that, like, we, that's what you've got to do these days. Yep. Well, it's safe to say that's gold right there for sure. Don't forget, get a free info kit on protecting your IRA or 401k with gold by texting DBC to 989898. I also have my candidate. Who you got? Oh, SVG. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know? It's we just, just, a, we just, just didn't give him lucky, enough love yes. today, I feel like. <laughs> I'm sure Jason's going to send all the B-roll content of SVG. Does it always say here. title right justified at the top of this page? Uh, or I titled you just that been doing for that? episode 300 and I just <laughs> kept it. Yeah. I was wondering how long as he thinks That's on purpose. That. <laughs> Retirement may not be at the top of your mind right now, or you get busy and thinking about retirement and savings and other investing strategies get pushed down the to-do list. But our sponsor, Birch Gold Group, makes it really simple for you to get educated about a good way to diversify, and that's considering precious metals. It costs nothing to get educated, and there's no obligation. Precious metals are a great investment option, TJ. I don't know if you've ever looked into them, but after last week, I got that text message and I have. There's a wide range of benefits, and my favorite part is just diversifying my portfolio. With an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, you're in good hands with Birch Gold. It costs nothing to become educated, and that's what we're encouraging you to do. To get your free info kit, text DBC to the number 989898. There's no obligation. Just fill out the brief form, and they'll send you all the information you need to get educated on precious metals. That's DBC to 989898. Moving on to DBC picks. Congratulations, Freddie. You, you damn won right. with McDowell. 
We are picking for the Glen next, and Brett, you are up first. Well, we know the infatuation that Andrew has with Shane Van Gisbergen, so I'm going to go with another guy who's infatuated this week with a driver. I'm going to donate my pick in honor of Jeff Gluck. I'm going to take Chase Elliott. That's a good one. Interesting. I thought I had a good one last week with AJ, but Logano, I'm sorry, Blaney proved, proved me wrong. I thought I had a good one, too, Tyler. Oh. I couldn't pick McDowell, so I don't feel bad about not picking him. Freddie did. TJ, who do you have? I I want to take him, but uh, I know how hard it is to win two in a row. I am going to go with Christopher Bell. Casey, who'd your friend slay to pick? Have you ever made a pick <laughs> yourself without help? Yeah, which means last. Yes, actually, I have. Last year Multiple when times. she when she had a bias dinner. <laughs> Multiple times. I picked myself. Don't worry. Uh, Are you going to help me pay for dinner this year? Because I'm going to finish. <laughs> I'll take McDowell. <laughs> you can't. You can't take McDowell. Yes, she could. Why, you didn't do that to me when I did it. I picked Locked McDowell out. already? Nope, yeah. you didn't. You got McDowell. Good, no, good I pick. don't. No, you, and you can't change your pick. No, I I'll take no. dinner. Oh, that is such a lie. We are not going to go. I couldn't change the Bubba. Is that I, not true? We probably would have won. No. Yep. I'm t- yeah, I wanted to go with Bubba in Michigan. They wouldn't let me switch. When? We're going to go back though? to what? That was last week. But you, you can't switch. And someone else picked it earlier this year, and we didn't let him fix it either. Yeah. Yes, we yeah, did. Yeah, but this is this is right now. Don't yeah. care. Yeah, about yeah that later. was Sorry. way later. Sorry about your luck. Didn't even you show don't up. repick. So I'll uh, take. No, uh, I Casey, think you can, you can I, repick. Thank you. Thank no, you. you don't repick. Yes. How are we changing the roles? You right can now? pick again. I'm you taking, can have I'm Austin Dillon. <laughs> Let's take a vote. What? Between us three, should we like? <laughs> nope. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's Unanimous Marshall. decision. <laughs> she called out the name. Andrew. When you say f- Nuno, you got to have one card left, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew you can't be sitting there with here. two f- cards. Andrew makes the rules here. I support him. Uh, <laughs> then this you're opening a can of worms for the next time somebody wants to change their This pick. is going to. This, this All sure. the integrity of the whole f- thing is gone now. <laughs> I am 100%. I'm going to take Chase Elliott. I'm 100% sure you can't read who you have. <laughs> I'm taking him too, f- you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take Chase. Okay, me and Brett are both going to get a win this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can't do that, Freddie. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, now, now there's official <laughs> now, now rules. There's rules oh, again. Wait, now there's rules. Now there's rules, yeah. Because oh, Chase Elliott was already picked. Who, this uh, I'm going to tell you, Bubba Wallace wasn't picked last week, or Michigan, and he wouldn't let me switch. Yep, it's ridiculous. That's true. Um, I picked last, too. Is Chandler Smith running this week? I see him on my list. Uh, Negative. Okay. Uh, I will take Daniel Suarez. He's fast. Hopefully. See who qualifies good. What's Bubba's headset, man? What's his head like? His headset? I don't think he wears what's, a headset. What's, he his, what's, wears his, a what's his head like? What's y'all's head like, man? You got to get points. Man, we're, we're, I mean, I thought we – like we, I talked about it here last week. We did what we needed to do yesterday. Make them – like, you know, he, he's uh, – you know, I told him good job at the end of the race. He's, yeah, great, good job sucking or something like that. And I just – you know, like, you just got to improve. Like, you get, like, last couple of races, we've wrecked at road courses. So, to, to go from wrecking in the last two to running – we ran 17th, 18th pretty much all day long and, and finished there. Uh, no cautions to really jumble things up, uh, and that, that's what we have to do. We have to bank as many points as we can. And yesterday, I think we got 19 or 20. Them guys got them. They did what they needed to do. They went out, and I said on here, they got to go get 100 points basically in the next two weeks yeah. to catch us. And they did. You know, they the Suarez and and Ty didn't Ty didn't make up the time, but like Suarez and McDowell, obviously McDowell won, but they were going to get. I th- over 50 points each yesterday. So they did what they needed to do. We were kind of doing what we needed to do. Obviously, hopefully we can run a little bit better this week. And, and honestly, Brett, I think that, like, I don't want to go into Daytona with, like, a, a uh, you know, a, I just want to go rate race at Daytona. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to think about, like, you know, are we going to – can we – do we just ride around and save because we've got a 10 point cushion? Like, what? Right. Like, just, let's just, just go, go race. Let's just go race. So, uh, and I know that's a, but like, I hate point racing. I hate, like, I just would rather go and, and do what we need to do, like, and run up front and just outright. So, instead of trying to, you know, manipulate it some way in our favor. But, yeah, uh, I think that we're, we're on pace. We, that we built that gap up leading into these road courses for a reason because we knew we were going to bleed out some points here. And, and we did the first one. And hopefully we can minimize that risk for the next one. We are racing Kevin Harvick, <clears throat> basically. Yep. Three points off of him. Uh, and you need to be ahead of him in the event we get two more winners because then one of y'all's out. 
Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We're racing hard right now. You, yeah, yours matters mm-hmm. big time. People look at that big cushion and go, oh, they're good. Not if we get a new winner if that's we behind can, you guys in points If we can finish week. in front of Kevin Harvick the next two races, I feel pretty good about our – I mean, I, we're, I think yeah. we're in. Yeah. So, but, and you know, Kevin hasn't been lighting the world on fire here recently. Um, we, we haven't had the best road courses. We've been piecing together things here and there, but going into Daytona, um, that's – you never know. I'd like to not have another winner, new winner between here and then. That way, we're both safely in. Yeah. But which it, will be it, tough, especially at Daytona. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, if we're gonna go somewhere and have to race our way in, let's go to Daytona. I'm, I'm, let's go. If we, it gives you that we can control a lot of stuff at Daytona. Watkins Glen is completely different. A lot of people are gonna tell you that, oh, we're coming off a road course and we're going to another one. And so much is going to be the same. Nothing's the same. That The S's at Watkins Glen are a completely different animal than anything anybody saw at Indy. The uphill, the downhill shifting going into one. I mean, I used to say Carousel. with the old car that turn one at Watkins Glen was the hardest corner in NASCAR because we would guys see guys wheel hop and wreck and everything else. You're getting around that carousel. And then also on these restarts, when we see crashes – in the S's, and we see crashes coming off that carousel, it can collect 8 to 12 cars. I mean, we've seen some really, really big wrecks. Even you look at Rudeman in between 1 and 2 back in the day. You look at Hornish off of the carousel. Um, it just that, that track is really, really narrow, and it clogs up really quick. So this is a big weekend, and don't tell me that a guy's going to be fast at Watkins Glen just because he was fast at Indy. I ain't buying it. No. Well, as always, thank you guys so much for listening don't forget to leave us a comment tell us what you think like share retweet you know some drill. reviews we got any re- we got we got re- we, i haven't checked the reviews in a long time let's, check let's, some let's, let's go check but yeah how about some good reviews yeah. how about here. you leave us a review if you leave us a good entertaining no five leave, star leave, review. Us, leave us any review tell us the no, truth. No, no 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 five star review tell us the truth that we're great that's all we that's want all, to hear. Every, that, all we'll we have read, is five star reviews well, we're not asking for lower star reviews. We can't do that. We're on a five star podcast, so there's only one star to get. That's right. Five of them. If you leave us a five star review, we'll read it. We'll read some of them next week on the show. How's that sound? Perfect. I like it. Perfect. Give it a shot. Also, Michael McDowell was on Action Detrimental this week. I cannot so wait to make sure you to tune that into that. Yep. Should make sure you listen to the uh, gambling got, show where you can hear the cell got, phone dings. Do you think he's got AC in his studio? Probably not. I mean, sitting in a speakeasy. We need to hurry up because we're all like, this is like a sauna. I'm dying. All right. Well, we appreciate y'all listening. Fan sponsorship for the next. We'll be back next week. Everybody's planning on being here. Have a great week. Where we at? Where we going? Watkins Glen. We just talked about it. Yeah, we're going to Atlanta first, and then Watkins. Hey, Fred, you see, no Watkins Glen actually is in New York. It is. In case you're wondering, we don't race in New Jersey. Unlike the Giants. (laughs) Freddie's just just now sobering sobering up. No, I'm not. I I don't. Hopefully by tomorrow when I just do it all over again. Y'all have a fun week. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah. We out. See ya.